Hi Vogue, I'm Catherine O'Hara, and I'm going to show you, I don't know why, but I'm going to show you my life and looks. I loved working on this movie. Our costume designer, Aggie Gerard Rogers, took me to Maxfield, remember, on Melrose in Los Angeles, where they, they sell very, very cool, expensive clothes, somewhere I had never shopped myself. And we got to pick out really wild, great stuff. I still have this jacket and this hat. You may see it in another picture, <laughs> this top hat. Looking at these pictures from this time, I think, wow, I think uh, Delia Dietz, my character in Beetlejuice, and Moira Rose, character I played in Schitt's Creek, are sisters, if not the same person <laughs> with a different accent. It's a really strong, really strong wardrobe, and, and look at me, and I'm interesting. This is the second time I wore this dress publicly. Jewel Hallmeyer, our wonderful costume designer from SCTV, he had it made for me. I drew it. We worked on the design together. At the time, I swear he told me it was made with Kobe beef or Wagyu because he said the cows, the leather was so soft on this dress. He said because the cows were massaged every day. Oh, it's just wonderful when something is actually made for your body. Such a difference. And I still have it and I'll wear it again. Home alone. This is one of those wardrobe looks that one wears for a whole movie. <laughs> it was in the days of really broad shoulders and long jackets. It was very well-to-do woman, elegant dresser, you know, businesswoman, successful woman. That was my look. Did we go away on the first one? Yes. <laughs> I forget. Wait, yes. It was also travel look, I guess. It was very comfortable, kept me warm. I had a beautiful coat to go with it. I kept it for a few years, then I gave it to my sister, Patricia, who lives in England. It looked great on her. And I don't know if she got rid of it. I think she could have made money. She told her to sell it. This was uh, um, from Schitt's Creek and Moira was told that this really cool high-end fashion photographer was coming and was going to do a, sh a shoot with her in this town. This town whose name she's never spoken aloud. <laughs> and, and, and she's so nervous about it. And she puts this look together. And this is a uh, Ralph Simmons dress. And our wardrobe department, and this happened a few times with uh, Moira where they had to go online and find out how to put it together. I stood there and they tried so many different versions and we're all laughing and enjoying it. But they finally, they went online and they're blowing up the pictures and they're you know, calling people, what the hell, what do you do with this? And then we had a great shirt. It might be this one. I think it is. It's this shirt. Of course, great jewels, the excess. You can never accessorize enough if you're Moira Rose. But really fun because it was really, um a vulnerable uh, moment for Moira. Daniel and, and Deb shopped all year long online, but you know, uh, Farfetched and, and Real Real and uh, Outnet and all the sites that sell designer clothes uh, for you know, lower prices uh, because they're you know from earlier collections. And that's what we needed. We needed clothes that we had when we were really wealthy, but, but you know, they were, both of them, shocked amazingly and found us the most incredible clothes. And Daniel said it was hard to stop after he ended the show. It was hard to stop shopping for Moira. <laughs> for the Tony Awards, I was asked to present the live musical number for Beetlejuice the Musical. And I wanted to uh, dress in keeping with, uh, you know, Tim Burton black and white. And I was looking online for black and white dresses, black and white dress box, and I found this collection of Marc Jacobs. I thought, how can I possibly get Marc Jacobs wear? I wasn't working with the stylist. And I phoned my friend Ricky Veter, who uh, used to be a, a designer and his very good friends with Marc Jacobs. And I phoned her, I said, Ricky, is there any chance you could, I don't know, ask if I beg, if I could borrow, uh, you know? And she walked into a woman who she knows who works with Marc Jacobs while I was asking her in that very moment. And she said, oh, uh, excuse me. They talked and she told, and and, uh, and so they arranged for me to borrow this dress. Uh, very cool. I've always loved black and white and I think it can be very clean and works anywhere. And then working on Schitt's Creek for six years, really, you know, just strengthened my love for black and white even more. It's bold and it's strong and it's graphic and cartoony. <laughs> and cool all at the same time. Classic. This was a big fun year for us, being invited to Hollywood and awards shows and, you know, from doing our little show in Toronto. I got to work with a stylist, Andrew Gelwix, and he found me so many great, great, great looks. And this is a Norma Kamali jumpsuit. 
but it is so graphic and fun and it's a really soft material. Felt great. I think I did that pose many times over the night to scare people and show them how cool my outfit was. I finally learned that you cannot go by, by clothes on the hanger. I used to, when I would go to a wardrobe fitting and I'd look at stuff on the hangers, I'd go, no, no, okay, oh no, no, you know, just kind of, nervous and fearful and and now when in the last year or two when i've worked with andrew um he'll bring clothes and he'll say do you want to try this on and i was like yes because you don't know you know and i would never know how that would look that great norma kamali one piece without trying it on it's just it felt great i have never sat in the first row of a fashion show and i always i've always wondered how it felt and uh, I got to wear Tom Ford, this very cool suit, which felt like sexy armor. It was really strong and the skirt was really tight. And those shoes are so high, but so beautifully built that I was comfortable for the whole night in those shoes. I couldn't believe how serious people were. Really, really serious about what impression they were making on each other. It was just so, there was so little laughing or smiling. It's so intense. The least uptight person there was Tom Ford. He's so loose and cool and he's very funny. He's very easy. I just felt like a uh, happy alien in that place. Okay, this is a, a Pamela Roland dress. The dress cost more than anything, any several outfits together that I ever wore on the show. It was so beautiful in person. The detail of beading and ostrich feathers, I think. I felt beautiful. Then this crown that I'm wearing is made of zip ties. They found on Etsy. I felt like Moira felt. I really felt like I was at a real premiere <laughs> in this sad little town. It was just exciting as any other red carpet. I've always thought that Moira's wear was um, very protective, and very defensive, and like armor. It's aggressive and defensive at the same time. Offense and defense. And it's wanting to prove something. I'm different, I don't belong here. I have talent, I should be famous, I should, you know, um, I have such potential. And then she actually has this movie, and even though she's in this town with this premiere and her daughter is her PR agent, um, I think there's an openness by that, that she's comfortable and confident enough to wear something this feminine and this revealing and this beautiful, really. It, it's not defensive at all, it's just, I'm actually in a movie and it's actually having a premiere <laughs> and I may actually be on the road again to being famous and acting. And, you know, it's full of hope. Before we went back to work for the sixth season, Daniel called me and told me all the outlines for the season coming up and our story. She was he was telling me what Moira was going to experience and he got to this wedding <laughs> and he said, and Moira is going to officiate and we're work, we're thinking about what she's going to look like and or what she's going to wear. And I did say, and Daniel will vouch for this, I said, what about a papal look, you know, the miter? I tried on the miter and found out that they're pretty crispy hard on the head. So I asked Anya if she could make a roll of hair around, and I did a little drawing, which she has, but she made it. And she went through, I don't know how many nights at home trying to put this thing together. She ended up using the glue that she used to put down tiles in her kitchen to keep this thing together. It's an Alexander McQueen dress that Deborah found, uh, Tom Ford gold boots. Daniel has said that because uh, Moira took the job so seriously and cared so much about why she was there, that she actually managed not to upstage the wedding couple. So even as insane as it is, it was about them. And I cried all day long. Vogue, thank you so much for letting me uh, go down memory lane with my looks. I hope you enjoyed them as much as, as they frightened me.